Hey there viewers, it's Charlie, I'm back again with another Transformers review. And today's review is going to be on... Studio Series First Movie, Starscream. Now, this guy is essentially an upscaled version of the Dark of the Moon Deluxe Starscream figure. I mean, I don't have that figure, so I'm just going to review this figure based on... On its own merits and not as an upscale. But what's curious is. In Earthrise they would do the same thing again. They would up upscale a Starscream. To Voyager scale and release it. This time upscaling classic Starscream. For Earthrise Starscream. So yeah kind of curious. But well. Let's just take a quick look at the packaging. And of course we've got the standard Studio Series packaging, well the older style, before I think 2021, 22, before 2022 uh, redesigned it. But here we have Starscream just aiming this weapon at someone, I don't know who. But we've got a close up of Starscream's face for this side, the same picture as Starscream that we have in the front of the box for the other side. An Autobot Insignia, which is not an error, this is the usual insignia used for the backdrops. Although, it would be cool if the Decepticons had the Decepticon Insignia for the backdrop. I don't know, but I just say that because with the Devastator components, they had a Devastator face for the backdrop. And of course, the Studio Series 86 figures had the number 86 for the backdrop. Okay, I'm getting off topic, let's just move on. The back of the box, we've got Starscream in both modes. We've got a, a little description of the backdrop that you get. Plus the actual backdrop included. We've got a, a little bio, just seeing what he does in the film. This, this figure is actually a, a licensed F-22 Raptor uh, toy, I guess. Well, it's... It's, it's licensed by Lockheed, at, at, at least, which is cool. And something which you don't see on the later Studio Series releases, a cross-sell. Who knows, probably because the later Studio Series figures just... Like, we're... We know we have 100 figures now, and that's not counting the Studio Series 86 figures. I mean, this was around at the time that Power of the Primes was, like, ending, so... Sure. I, I think this was released a bit before Siege, like a, a couple months before Siege actually, so yeah. Now for the, the backdrop. Well, of course we got a destroyed city. No doubt because this was after Jazz died, maybe? I'm not sure. Taking a quick look, we've got some jets up here. Unfortunately, not the Seekers, because they didn't appear in the films themselves until, I think, Bumblebee. Yeah, it was weird. Like, we only got Starscream in the films. We didn't get, like, Thundercracker in the others until, like, B Bumblebee. I mean, I, I do, they were in the toy lines, but not the actual films themselves, for the most part. So yeah, now, of course, if you want to, you can just put the vehicle mode here, though, I'd say it works better in robot mode, so we'll come back to this at the end of the video, like we usually do with Studio Series reviews. And well, taking a look at the jet mode, well, of course, it's an F-22 Raptor. Of course, without the uh, tribal tattoos, because this was before Friends of the Fallen. But while taking a quick 360. Got some thrusters here. Of course, we've got the landing gear. Of 
It's got some interior detail in the cockpit, which is really nice. It's an Got the Decepticon Insignia, which is the correct movie version. Which is a nice attention to detail. This wing just has a, I guess, Air Force uh, symbol. I'm not sure which one though, because, you know, I don't really... It's probably just made up of the film. I, I have no idea. Jim Deneef, which... Of course, like all Star Screams, we get a lot of kibble. I mean, it, it just looks like a bunch of shrapnel underneath the the jet. I mean, that's that's of course meant to be the arms. This is meant to be a kibble that goes around the the, the nose cone for the robot mode. So yeah. I mean, compared to his G1 counterpart, well, the Air Force version at least, is it really all that bad? Because this is essentially most of the robot mode on the underneath, whereas with this, it's essentially just the ar the arms. It's... Now, for accessories, of course you get this... I guess, gun, which is also a blade? I'm not sure. The Leader Class figure also had this. I've got it attached onto the figure, but I'll just try and get, get it detached. Whereas, this is just a standard gun. This was a missile launcher. Yeah, I'm not really sure what this is meant to be. I mean, this can come off. I mean, judging by all that marred plastic dead, this is probably like a QC defect or something. So this is probably not intended to come off. But, oh well. Now, for weapon storage, it can go on the underneath of the, of the jet. If you want that sticking out, out the back. I mean, sure. At least it's not just plonking it on the top like the War for Cybertron trilogy figures do. So, yeah. Now, for comparison, here he is with the G1 Studio Series Starscream, or Air Fry Starscream, if you will. Of course, this is the Studio Series 86 release. And of course, this guy didn't even have landing gear, whereas this guy, he was released before him, mind you, dead. Here he is with the Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe figure. And of course, you can see the difference between the first and second movies, with all the tribal detailing. Of course, it's personal preference whether you like the detailing or not, but seeing how this kind of scratches off, I kind of prefer this. And here he is with Leader Class Starscream. I mean, seriously, oh my god. Seriously, this was back when the leader class was actually big, not just a Voyager with armor on it, or a Voyager with a, a few extra accessories. I'm looking at you, Blitzwing and Astro Train. I mean, seriously, of course this also has the tribal detailing, but the it's a release that has the movie one detailing if you want that. But yeah. And something else that modern leader figures don't have. 
sound effects. But of course, I've already reviewed this figure before, so let's not go into too much detail. And well, that's pretty much it for the vehicle mode. I actually quite like it. I mean, sure, you can just say it's an upscale Darker Than Moon Starscream, to which I say... I mean, keep in mind, this was an upscale of classic Starscream, and... I mean, sure, it does ha have its flaws, typical... Uh, typical paint, no landing gears, but I still like it. If anything, I've, I'm pretty sure I like this way more than most people do, actually. And with this, I just think this is a really nice looking jet mode. So yeah, that's that's one mode down, let's get onto the robot mode. So, to transform this guy, well, if you've got the Dark of the Moon Deluxe figure, I'm pretty sure it's going to be very similar. But to start, we're just going to fold up the landing gear. Push in the tail fins. Try and just and peg these wings. That uh, and that just lets you fold this forward. Open this up. Open these up. Open this up. Get the arms out. Like so. Pull these wings in like so. Pretty much just spread the legs out. And tab them. Fold up the foot. And you can see how they captured the chicken leg look pretty well. Push the nose cone in. Close this up. Close these sections. We're supposed to uh, tab in. If I can, there we go. Unpick the hands. And there you have Starscream in robot mode. And I actually think that's quite the fun transformation. Yes, I think a Michael Bay uh, Transformer figure transformation is fun. There's very few that that are kind of actually easy easy to do. Not counting like uh, kid centric uh, figures like uh, activators from uh, oh, what's a uh, Revenge of the Fallen and uh, the one step changes. So with this, this is definitely really nice to do. I mean, seriously. Have you seen how the uh, Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Starscream transforms? Compare it with this. And this... Like, this is a much better transformation than that, in my opinion. But, well, taking a look at the robot mode... Well, that's one thing I need to address. Of course, he has the chicken leg stance, so... 
could be a bit of a challenge to get him posing, but in a straight stance, he stands pretty well. If anything, he only fell because I was uh, attending him by the leg. But yeah, with poses, it could be kind of challenging because he's just in that hunched over look. But that that's just how this version of Starscream is meant to look. Of course, taking a look at the head. Of course, he's got that, sh that shriveled up gerbil look. Although, unfortunately, unlike the deleted class figure, it doesn't open up, which is rather unfortunate. But, oh well. It's a void... It's a Voyager figure that's meant to be an, an obstacle of a deluxe figure, so it's understandable. What's also understandable is the lack of any weapon ports on the feet, because, of course, this was before Siege, keep in mind, technically. If anything, I think Siege was like the end of 2018, this was a, 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 around the start of 2018. However, we can still arm him up, because, of course, we can just take this. We can actually just fold up his hand. Be careful not to do it like this, because you just, you'll just just pop off the ball joint. Try and fold it up via the actual ball joint itself. You just fold up the hand, and then you just pop this in. And now he's just got this. So yeah. Now he's got that look going on. And, and well, there's not really much else to say here, so let's just take a, a closer look at some of the detailing. Oh, I'll just quickly pop this off. Not, not the weapon, not the hand. Yeah, that's definitely a, a complaint. The ball joints in the hands can be Quite easy to uh, accidentally pop off when you're trying to transform the hands. But well, we've got some uh, detailing here on the sides. Got some really nice detailing here on the arms. And of course, on the back, if you don't want him to have the weapon on his hand, well, you can just store it on his back. Like so. Something that the leader class figure also did. So yeah. Now for comparison. Here he is with Studio Series G1 Starscream. Of course in his coronation gear because that's what he came with. And keep in mind, this is a leader, cl this is a leader class figure. A modern leader class figure, mind you. And this guy is still taller. Okay. Here he is with the Revenge of the Fallen Starscream. And his loose legs, which are actually holding him up this time. If anything, I don't think this is actually a deluxe. I think this is actually a Voyager. I've been, I've been calling him a deluxe throughout the entire video. You see, it's been quite a while since I messed with this figure, so I'm bound to misremember things, but you can see these guys are actually around the same height, but yeah, I I definitely preferred this guy. I mean, I think he looks more accurate because this guy's got like pointy wings. The transformation is really weird for this guy. The paint kind of scratches off really easily, and I just think this guy is quite the mess. A much better Starscream figure for the movies. Leader class Starscream. And yes, I do mean leader class. I mean, seriously. Just look. I'm worried in case this guy topples over, but... Seriously, both leader class. 
But comparing these two, I mean, oh my god, seriously. I'll just let I'll just let you admire these two for a, a few seconds. So yeah, that was a quick a reminder of what Elite Clash used to look like back in the day. So yeah. Now for articulation. Well, this is before a siege kind of modernized articulation. Well, not uh, modernized, but standardized a lot of things. So yeah, this guy's head's on a ball joint, so it can kind of look up, it can look down, it can look side to side. Of course, his arms can move. Of course, you can T pose in the this weird gray Dorito kind of way. He does, ha he does have an elbow joint, and seeing how his hands can actually uh, rotate like this, and seeing how they're open, you can actually do some rather cool poses, like asking Michael Bay why he made Starscream look like this. Of course, the hand can rotate on a ball joint. No waist articulation, which... I mean, I don't know how they'd even try and add a waist joint into this. So, if anything, this is kind of understandable. Like, disappointing, but understandable. Of course, legs go forward, they can go back. Of course, you can do the splits. They can go in, if you want to do that, for trans but that's for transformation. So, swivel there, unfortunately. It's got knee joints. It's no ankle pivot, unfortunately, but you can do this for ankle pivot, although that's just going to mess up things. And he, he can move his foot. So, yeah. Quite posable. In fact, one thing I, I kind of like is how the landing gear is kind of a heel spur for this guy. It's actually kind of clever. Now just bringing in the, just getting the backdrop in again. I'd say he actually kind of fits in, like maybe not while standing, but in a pose, he'll definitely fit in much better. And well, that's pretty much all I have to say about this guy. So complaints. I mean, I do really like this figure, but there are some complaints. I mean, the hands can pop off the ball joint quite easily, especially when you're trying to transform the hand, either to go into jet mode or just to plug in the weapon. I also think he kind of falls over kind of easily if you're trying to pose him, so that can be kind of annoying. The transformation could be sort of fiddly, but trust me, nowhere near as fiddly as this mess. Like compared to uh, compared to other movie star screams, this is definitely way more manageable. If anything, it's only fiddly if you if you don't know what you're doing. But well, do I recommend this guy? Well, that depends. Do you prefer the, the treble tattoos of the second movie Starscream and beyond? Well, before he died in Dark of the Moon, that is. Well, there is a redeco that has the treble tattoos, so I'd say if you like the mold but you prefer uh, uh, Revenge of the Fallen Starscream, go for that release. Or do you prefer the Queen of uh, uh, Look at the First Movie, then? Sure, go ahead and get this version. Or... Are you a, a complete G1-er who thinks Starscream should look nothing like this and should instead just resemble his G1 counterpart? Get the get the Bumblebee movie version. Or just get Coronation Starscream. Basically, there's a studio series Starscream for everyone, but... As for this version... Despite it being an upscale of a Dark and a Moon figure, 
I think it's really, really nice, especially for one of the earlier Studio Series releases. I mean, sure, the later, the later Studio Series releases uh, are really, really good, especially the Cybertronian and Bumblebee movie characters, but for this figure, I actually quite like him. And with this being the 15th anniversary of the 2007 Transformers film, I think now is a really good time to get this guy. If you don't have him already. So, this has been my review on Studio Series' first movie, Starscream. And this is Charlie Young, signing off.